what if I wanted to buy like season tickets for the Panthers, which are doing pretty darn well uh, this year so far? You know, they determined that business is can no longer be fun. Really? Yeah, because um, entertainment is no longer deductible. Some of that real talk. How much are you overpaying the government every year in your taxes? That is the topic today that we're discussing on today's real talk. Today's real talk.com. Today's real talk.com. Today's real talk.com. I'm your host, your liaison, your small business owner, entrepreneur, walking through the many, many avenues of life today, and we're very excited. I'm Justin Kazepis, and we are joined by Mr. Ed Lloyd of Ed Lloyd and Associates, ELCPA.com. You're going to want to write this address down, ELCPA.com, ELCPA.com. If you're a real estate broker and you have your own business, right? If you are a property manager or you own investment properties, you are definitely going to want to stick around for today's entire episode. Mr. Ed, how are you, sir? Doing great, Justin. Thank you so much for the intro. Absolutely. Now, I got to tell you guys, and I, I, I each episode I give people full disclosure. So Ed Lloyd & Associates, they are the CPA accounting planning firm for Kazepis Law, my law firm. So I got to tell people that. But you know what? I think that they should be happy by that, Ed, because I am introducing them to superstars. And you, sir, are no doubt a wonderful asset. You help me make more money, Ed. And I like that about you. I appreciate that about you. And you're very knowledgeable. You've got your notes ready to go. I love it, Ed. I love it. <laughs> it. Let's break down what the episode's going to be about today. What we're going to start with is the history. Okay. What you've been telling me is that these changes that have happened on this Tax Cut and Jobs Act are some of the largest in, what, 30 years? That's correct. 30 years, some of the biggest changes we have seen to the tax code system. We're going to get into real estate. we got to talk about real estate because I know, Ed, that like we've discussed, real estate has been affected tremendously by these new rules and laws and regulations. There's some benefits for real estate. There definitely is. You're correct. And then we're going to talk about generally as a business owner, right? So, so on my way, someone who's behind the scenes usually on these episodes who doesn't come in front of the camera, Mr. Bryant Walker, he's the one behind the scenes. He was talking to me. He was like, hey, you know, you should call yourself a boutique firm now. That's the new lingo. Ed, or, did you know that, that as far as a small business calling them boutiques now? I that's, did. And that's I hadn't very heard true. of that. Yeah. yeah. No, I said, I said it, that sounds kind of dandy. And he was like, <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. It's eloquent. I said, okay. So, so as a boutique business owner, I guess I should say. We're going to talk about generally some of those things that, that business owners should be looking out for. And then something that you do very well, and that's the planning side. We want to talk about what is Ed Lloyd & Associates, what can they do for potential clients and helping them maximize their potential return and, and keeping of money, right? Because that's what it comes down to. Whenever you're making money, it doesn't matter how much you make. and how much you, It's how much you keep. And exactly that, right. That's what's important. So give us some history, Ed. Let's, let's break it down. Comparing the uh, previous code since the 80s to now, give us some history. What, what are we looking at as far as overall and, and some changes? Sure. Well, the biggest change, this is the biggest change since 86. Okay. And 86 did a lot of changes. But one thing from, from a real estate standpoint is it was huge in how it impacted the industry from a tax perspective. Mm -hmm. It introduced something called passive activity loss rules, which reduced the amount of deductions that people that made a lot of money could make. So they wanted to pull that back, and that's what happened in 86. So it's been 30 years since we've had a total overhaul of the code, and that's what they've done with the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. So so when you say a reduction in the amount that you can um, itemize, is that what you mean by that? Is that what you're talking about when you say that? Or? Well, it's, it's for losses. So okay. real estate was used for massive losses and massive write-offs, and they wanted to curtail that. So they put activity loss rules in to where, based upon how much you were doing, basically are you full-time in this or not, um, versus being an investor, what could you pull out from a deduction standpoint? And if you made over thresholds, they said, no, no, no. Your deductions are limited, or typically they're just deferred down the road until you start making money or offset against selling it. So it was a big change in the way that we do the do real estate. Um, at the time, I was working for a CPA firm, and that's all we did was real estate. 
So I did work from Charlotte to Puerto Rico to Hawaii, and all we did was real estate. So it was a massive, massive change wow. um, for the industry at that time. Now, is that depreciation? Is that what that is or no? Am I wrong on that? Well, depreciation is part of it. It's the loss piece okay. that they are looking at. Um, deducting with the passive activity loss rules. So that's, that was a big change in 86. It's still here, but that was the last big change we've had from a history standpoint. See, and I tell people the truth about this, Ed. I don't know everything, right? And I don't want to act like I know everything. So I love when, when someone like you who is so knowledgeable about a particular topic, like especially something as important as taxes, right? Because I tell, I tell your team all the time, I say, hey, I just don't like auditors. And they laugh. <laughs> they think it's funny, but I'm serious. I get nervous about the fact of some I could be audited for anything. So uh, taxes are a very serious subject, right? The, the federal government, the state governments, they're going to come knocking at your door if they think that anything shady is going on. So it's important to have somebody who understands. And because you've been involved um, as an accountant and involved in the, the tax codes and the changes for so long, why trust anybody else? I mean, that that's ultimately the question. So, so as we delve into this, let, let, let's talk about specifically... Um, when you see the overall of the changes, and you say these are the biggest changes ever, is it just the real estate piece that's changed the most, or is the entire system just completely new at this point? Well, that's a great question. There are a lot of things that are new and then changed and are just totally different, and there are a lot of things that stay the same, um, both on the business and the individual side. But there are a lot of new things that they've added, which we haven't had before. Um, I've never seen an act, even though they've called them that in the past before, a simplification act and they didn't call this a simplification act because it's not the, you know the postcard days I don't think we'll ever see them but we'll see um, but this is definitely not a postcard act this is adding more complexity more benefits but more complexity that you have to look at than we've had before in this area for different deductions do you think turbo taxes online automated system is going to be able to keep up with these new regulations if you have a w-2 yes Okay. <laughs> but if you're a boutique business owner... No. Okay. In my opinion, no. I mean, because you have to look at it from a planning perspective. In the past, you could do a lot of planning. Not a lot of planning, but you could do a lot of things after the fact. This more than ever, and we'll delve into it later, is, is looking at planning really in two different ways. Because with the Act, it changes the structure of the code and the way that you need to look at your business and structure your business. And that's done as soon as possible. And then planning is typically done from Labor Day till Thanksgiving. That's just when it usually happens for most for most business owners. But this is a little bit different, and then you need to plan for what the act changes are, and then you also need to do your traditional tax planning as well in the fall. So when you say structure, so for instance, like so I'm a single member LLC, as you know. So yes. deciding whether to be taxed as an S corp and C corp is that the level you're talking about? That's or? correct. That okay. is correct. And if you're Schedule C, do you become an S corp? Just lots of different ideas and changes you need to look at and make sure how do I maximize it for my particular situation. Now, now from the, the little bit of knowledge I have here, Ed, the little bit of knowledge, as a single member LLC, um, in the past it has been more advantageous to be classified as an S corp rather than a C corp Correct. because of the double taxation concept versus pass through taxation. How much has that threshold changed for, for people, to, do you think, for, for this? For people in the service business that are successful, it probably hasn't changed. And the reason, even though C-corporation tax rates have come down, you're still in a double taxation environment. So for most people, this S-corporation is still going to be the preferred vehicle. Now, with every answer in tax, of course, the answer is it depends. Okay. So a C-corporation provides a lot of benefits. So if there's some benefits that you need um, for what you're doing, it may be advantageous to have a C corporation, maybe in conjunction with an S, or maybe to convert to a C. But that's just something you really have to look at on a on a one on one basis. But in your particular situation, um, an S corporation is going to be the best avenue for you. See, I like that. See, I got advice right here at the table. That was nice. That was <laughs> nice. I like that. So, so when someone's thinking about these things of the overall structure with the history. Um, Let's start with this then. The top three things. Give me the top three things that before anybody even makes the phone call, considers what are the top three questions they should be asking themselves when it comes to taxes and structuring as the new Tax Cut and Job Act sits today? Well, they need to say, this is my current entity structure. Does it make sense? Um, this is what my income is. Are there ways that I need to be able to change that based upon some of the new deductions that are out there? And then, am I counting for things correctly now? Because the new act 
did change the way that you have to do accounting for the new process and the deductions. One for the deductions and two for the changes in deductions. So am I looking at all three of those to be able to maximize and record correctly the deductions, right? So we want to maximize and rescue all the tax dollars we can, but we also want to make sure we're recording everything correctly so that if we do come in an audit situation, everything's clean, we're ready to Which go. Which we don't want, Ed. We, we don't want. Don't nobody, want audits. nobody wants audits. Audits are not a fun thing. <laughs> but if you're prepared for an audit, it's not a painful thing. And right. that's, the, that's the, what you're trying to accomplish. So, and I want to put you on the spot, but... I, I, when you Google the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, or you Google, you know, new tax code, whatever you put into Google, which is going to give you, you know, 10 million results in .007 seconds. Right. When I try to see what's the new corporate rate, right? Like that that's something that I feel like is important that a lot of people want to think about. What's my tax rate going to be? What bracket am I going to be in? And I mean, there's many ways to say it. Right. Um, differentiating between pass-through and C-corp. Do you know what the C-corp rate cur- is? With that's going to be 21%. 21%. How does that compare historically? Well, historically, it's it's been in the high thirties, depending upon your where you were from a revenue standpoint. It, it's a graduated, so it went it started at zero and went all the way up thirty seven, back down five three five. Um, so it's even, been as high as thirty seven percent. Yeah, before. And, even, and even higher. Oh wow! So when we start looking at other aspects of AMT and even the tax rates, can be even higher. But what is the objective was to bring the tax rates down to twenty one percent. And that's what they did. It's a flat 21% for, for C-Corp earnings. So that's changed C-Corps as well because before you had graduated scales going up, right? Now you just have one number. Yeah. Um, so what may have been more advantageous for a C-Corporation may still not be at 21%. You have to look at the numbers and see. But that's that's how that's changed as well. Do you think that there is going – or, or from what you're hearing in the industry, are there several companies that are changing from C-Corps maybe to S-Corps? Is that a possible way, or is it more so a change from S-Corp to C-Corp with the way these changes have been enacted? Um, I think a lot of people may stay the same, but there but there are instances where it may just switch from one to the other or add one. Um, I know what it has done is helped a lot of the large companies that were C-Corporations greatly reduce their taxes, right, which is the whole objective. Um, so that's helped the C-Corp range. Of, of companies, and they've enacted new deductions to be able to help the other business owners with the pass-throughs. Right. Um, so those have gotten a tax break as well. So everybody's gotten a tax break. And we're going to have a, a a full segment at the end of the episode, like we talked about, on, on the small businesses. But, but let's talk about, I guess, individuals for a little bit, right? Because people who don't necessarily have an LLC formed, right? Which they need to talk to you and, and understand the tax implications on that alone. I could talk to them about the liability from the attorney side. But for the individual, right, there's the standard deduction concept before you get into itemizing expenses. Has that changed um, in, in comparison to the old tax code to this new current one? Well, what they've done is they've changed what you can deduct in there. Okay, so they have made changes. But the, the thing that's going to really impact most people is going to be real estate taxes. Okay. And, and I sh- and it should expand that actually taxes itself. So which encompasses income taxes and real estate taxes. So that's capped now at $10,000. Big change from yeah. what we've had before. So if you are if you own a home, pay taxes, you're going to be limited on how much you can take for taxes. That total line item is going to be $10,000 now, where before it wasn't. That's a big change. That's a big change. Now, the objective was, well, we're reducing the rates to help compensate for that. So they pull the rates down, pull the deductions down. So depending upon what state you live in and how much money you make, it could be a big change for what, for what you have to be able to deduct. And they also got rid of um, the miscellaneous deductions, which are the unreimbursed business expenses for employees, right? All that stuff is gone. So if those were large items on your tax return as an individual, that's going to be a big change that you have to be able to look out for. Look at the tax rates. Look at what changed on my – it's called Schedule A, which is all where all these things go, and how is that going to impact me from a tax perspective. Do you see real estate as the section with the largest amount of change in the tax code? Uh, I wouldn't say the largest amount. They, there are lots of intricacies with it, but the, the big, big piece, which also encompasses real estate, is going to be the new deduction that they have for all businesses which includes real estate. Now, real estate did get a lot of changes from a depreciation um, as far as how much you can take, which, which are favorable, which is a good thing. So there were a lot. There are a lot of changes in real estate. There are a lot of changes in business. There are a lot of changes in individuals. So there's a lot of changes. There's a little bit for everybody, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, they try to make a little change for everybody. That's good. We are going to get into this real estate stuff, which is our next segment, and I'm very excited about it. So you're going to want to stick around. 
todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com. Justin Kazepis, we are going to be right back with Ed Lloyd of Ed Lloyd and Associates, ELCPA.com. I told you to write that down. I'm only going to have so many more times to tell you. We'll be right back. Looking to build a YouTube channel to get leads and sales for your business? Real results can do that. Looking to create a podcast that positions you as a thought leader? Real results can do that. Are you looking for video content to help market your business online? Real results can do that. If you need help with marketing or even training videos, then it's time to get real. Realresults.io Todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com, todaysrealtalk.com. Justin Kazepis with you in the studio, joined by Mr. Ed Lloyd of Ed Lloyd and Associates. Look, guys, I can only give you this address so many times. I One, I don't like sharing it that much because I feel like he's a hidden gem that I need to keep for myself, but I can't do that to you. i got to be real to the people. So ELCPA.com, ELCPA.com, ELCPA.com. If you are looking for someone to help you not only structure a business, not only help you year in and year out with your tax uh, planning and situations, but to help you in the long term. Guys, 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 I told you, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, and that is what's important. And Ed and his team can help you plan for many years in advance, so maybe you can retire in Australia or Hawaii or somewhere, right? I mean, if you want to go. That's right. See, Ed <laughs> wants to help you get where you want to go. Now, Ed and his team do have clients from East Coast to West Coast to in the Pacific in Hawaii. So no matter where you are located in the U.S., Ed and his team can help you. They understand. They have the tools and the resources to help maximize how much money you will keep each year, which is phenomenal. So we've talked a little bit about the history of the uh, tax code. Um, Now we've got the new tax code called the Tax Cut and Jobs Act um, to help promote um, the economy, boost the economy, right? You know all the the rhetoric behind all that, but we're getting into the specifics. So real estate, Ed, I'm in real estate. You know that. You obviously are involved in real estate in a capacity. So give me the nitty gritty. What am I looking at here, Ed? Is it good or bad in the long term, short term? What am I What am I facing here? Sure. Let's go some of, through some of the things we talked a little bit about before. So if you're in real estate, the good thing is tax rates have gone down. So you'll be paying a little bit less in taxes, which is a great thing. We like that. Um, long-term capital gains, Ooh. they haven't changed. So okay. we didn't get a bump up. Everything's right where it is on that. So that's still good and very favorable for real estate as well as for investors. If you sell a business, it's all a great thing. So with that stayed intact. Well, and now is the capital gains rate, is that a set rate or is that based on brackets? It's on brackets, 0, it's on brackets. 15, 20. So okay. um, that's federal. Okay. The, yeah. state, the states <laughs> don't care. Most states don't care if it's capital gain or regular income, they take, they tax it all at their traditional rates. Okay. There are exceptions, but the majority of them at traditional rates. Are there any states that do brackets as well, or do they just have set rates? Um, most states have brackets. Most states have brackets. Okay. Yeah. But it depends. I mean, there's, yeah. it's all over the board. Yeah. Some have zero, right? You, you go to Tennessee and pay none. Okay. Um, but it, it just depends by the state. Right. And that's why it's it. important to know the specifics and have the resources and tools to understand that every state is different with their taxes, right? Correct. Just like real estate law, every state is different is what the way that they transfer title of property and everything like that. Now, Ed, I got to ask you the, the hard question. I got to ask you the hard question. Is it a good time based on the tax code to become a real estate investor or is that an industry that you see taking a loss or reducing the amount of margins and profits because of this Tax Cut and Job Act? I don't see the Tax Cut and Job Act impeding the uh, real estate market at all. I think it gets some favorable opportunities. And just like anything else, if you're looking at a property and everything makes sense, then it's a good time to buy. Now, it's not the cheapest time to buy, right? right? We know that. (laughs) So, you know, the answer to that is it depends as well. So if you have something that's priced to where you can make money and feel like you're going to have a good return, the the Jobs Act is not going to impede that for you. Excellent. That's good to hear. I mean, because I think that's what a lot of people are nervous about. They're hearing these things like they can't deduct certain expenses or they can't, you know, write off as much or whatever the the terms are, which I'm sure I'm butchering right now. Uh, That is some of the scare, 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 Scarcity, scarce tactics that are happening right now as far as what I'm seeing. Um, and people have those questions. And when they call me and ask me, I say, hey, you need to call an accountant. And you know what? who you need to call? Ed Lloyd and Associates. Well, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the nice thing is when you go through, the, you just go through a process, right? You're doing the investigation on the property. You're making sure that all that's going to work. 
you just go one step further and make sure from a tax perspective, how's that going to impact my cash flow? And that helps you understand the whole picture. It, now, as far as real estate goes, because let's break it down into the person who doesn't have an entity formed and running the money um, and taxing it that way versus as an individual. Um, upside and downside to that, I guess. Let, let's let's get into that a little bit. Well, some, for some people, it makes perfect sense. Let's say you got two or three properties. Um, you don't need to have a separate entity set up for that, um, except for asset protection. And you talk to an attorney about that from an asset protection standpoint. Um, you also make sure you have adequate insurance. That can be a very good asset protection as well if you have a small number of properties. Um, Hurricane so season is upon us right it now. It is here. Yeah, it is here. <laughs> and hopefully it's here and gone. That's right. So we'll, we'll know that in a couple of days. <laughs> uh, time, time will tell on that one. So is there a limit? Like if you let's say you have it as a personal, um, running it as personal versus an entity. Is there anything then you can't? do on the personal side that you could do on the entity side when it comes to taxes for real estate? No, there's not because it kind of it's going to flow through typically to the individual side anyway. Um, the consideration you have is from a lending standpoint, how to have this structured to where it's going to work best with the banks. And that's important, right? Because if Critical. you have an investor that's getting a, a loan on a property, whether it's hard money cash or you're trying to go traditional financing, Ed, I mean, I mean, these days they, they want everything plus my firstborn in order to give me a loan on a property. Um, so if having to run that through the personal makes it more difficult, what are the advantages then to having it as an entity? Is there is there a well? The, I, I mean, from a lender standpoint, they're still going to look at everything as a whole, but sometimes they have will only lend for so many properties inside of a particular LLC or something like that. Every bank is different. So that's something when you're doing the structuring, you need to look at and say, okay, how am I going to finance this? Understand what your bank rules are and how they feel most comfortable and then to structure it accordingly. So from the real estate perspective on, let, let's talk about something that, that whenever your team sees my uh, statements, they, they ask me the question, is this an improvement or an expense? Right. What is the difference there and why does it matter, Ed? Well, it's really look at how you classify it. So if you have something that's going to be for the long term, it's an improvement. So it's something that's depreciated over time. It may be written off right away, but it's just the way that you um, characterize whatever that expenditure is for. And you mentioned the caps previously, right? That's something we talked about in the first segment, the caps on depreciation and losses, I believe is, is what you said. How does that play in? What's the number, right? Because for, for the average the average investor, let's say, let, let's let's set, set aside the megalodon corporations for a second. Let's talk to the, to the individual person that's like, hey, I'm ready to buy my first rental property. Right. Are, should they be concerned about, about a cap on their, their loss, or are those numbers just so high that, that – as a new well, they, they should be based on how much money they make. You know, we'll go through maybe that a little bit later from a detail standpoint. But if from a conceptually standpoint, that depends too because they did make some changes on how much money you make and how many losses you can have all set against that. So what they don't want to happen anymore is you wiping out all of your W-2 income with losses. They're like, darn it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't go away. It just moves forward. And in some aspects, that's actually good because when you've got a deduction – why are you going to start throwing a deduction at a, at a low rate? Why not keep it when it's maybe worth twice as much? You know, so when you're doing tax planning, you have to look at what's my return on investment. Right. I typically don't advise on getting your tax to zero because unless you're making some different changes, um, it typically costs you cash to do that. Yeah. So am I going to spend a dollar to get for 15 cents? I'm not, and I, I, think, I think most of your listeners would agree on that. So, I mean, there's some, there's some we got to correct out there. there right? It's yeah, okay, right. So, <laughs> you never chase deductions without understanding what's my return on investment. Just like you don't buy anything without understanding return on investment. Well, I guess then uh, the, this is a question I get all the time. As the closing attorney in real estate, right, I have to walk through the 1099 with, with the, the, the 1099 exemption form where I ask them those six questions that determine whether or not I have to report the sale to the IRS. So uh, when it comes to selling real estate and whether what their tax um, liability will be as an individual on the sales side, is there a quick scheme, quick formula, anything you can give people on that side of things? I wish there was yeah. <laughs> because there's there's different pieces with the real estate. You have to look at depreciation, um, which reduces your basis in the property. And depending upon what you have depreciated and how quickly you've depreciated it depends upon how much gain you're able to exclude. With the 1031, now you can, the real property, you can exclude that, but not personal property, you can 1031. So that's in the 1031, 
That's a deferral. Right. So you're just deferring what I'm paying today, kicking the can down the road until I sell the property um, down the road. The disadvantage of that is you're also reducing the basis of the new property, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't depreciate that amount. So there are other ways we look at, well, does it make sense to just go ahead and um, do a different type of, of sale, postpone that for a, a longer period of time, mm -hmm. and then get basis in the new property. There's lots of ifs and thens yeah, that you can look course. at with the real estate. Yeah, of course. It sounds estate, like right? it. <laughs> so from plan, just for planning for any capital asset, there are, there are lots of different ways you have to look at how much is it and which is the best way to do it, and do I need the cash yeah. to be able to, because a 1031, you're kicking the cash down too, right? So do I need the cash? From, so from a planning perspective, we just look at different opportunities on ways to maximize those dollars. And, and that style of depreciation of rolling it to the next one, rolling it to the next one, and keep kicking the can down the road, like you said, can I just set it up to where I could just kick the can my whole life and then maybe two or three more generations? Or, or is there a time limit on when this catches up? Well, at some point, it's going to catch up when you die, right? But then, but then at death, your basis goes up to fair market value. So through different planning perspectives like this, in your case, we're not going to uh, start worrying about that. But, Darn it. Uh, <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a really good thing. That's uh, right. Keep but, it protected. But uh, depending upon your age and your assets, you, you look at things differently. Um, so a deferral piece at 1031 could be absolutely perfect for what you're trying to accomplish. And I don't mean to put you on the spot about 1031s. You guys don't handle 1031 exchanges, right? Your team, you guys don't, don't facilitate We don't facilitate the, those right. because just like – when you're, you're doing a 401k plan, right? The rules are very specific. And you want somebody that does that all the time because one little mistake in the paperwork and you can have a problem. So there are companies that do that day in and day out, and that's what they do. So they're more effective in it, and they're also much more cost effective um, for the client as well. They can do it for a whole lot less money than somebody that doesn't do it all the time. And I, I think it's good because they have the experience in that. Um, whereas even if... We could very readily do it, but it makes sense to have somebody that specializes in those types of areas, in my opinion. Now, you could tell me my tax liability and compare this or that right. if-then kind of concept. Right. And when you say it could be a problem, I'm assuming you're probably meaning the audit man could come knocking at my door. Exactly. Like, and, and from a cost perspective, there's no reason for me to do something that somebody else can do, and it's going to be much cheaper for you. Yeah. There's just no reason for it to, to do that. Absolutely. When someone's thinking about... Um, a purchase of real estate and, and let's get let I want to talk specifically to the real estate brokers right now because that's most of the people who I deal with are the real estate brokers what should they be concerned with when it comes to starting their business and then saying I got a lot of them these days who are calling me saying hey I'm thinking about investing myself and they say to me hey what what are some of the things I should look for on the tax side well first off I tell them to call you because they don't want me answering those questions <laughs> so if someone is thinking about becoming that investor right and they've got a real estate experience where they can run the numbers right they can see potentially what their profits will be long term you know does the ROI make sense but from the structural standpoint of, of real estate and putting it into a specific entity or, or individual and then thinking of the long term taxes what are some of those initial questions that they should be thinking about there from a tax perspective it really doesn't matter you can hold them all individually you can hold them all in a partnership well that's being split among partners right. Um, right or an LLC taxes a partnership is the more traditional or just an LLC single owner. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's still gonna roll and the character is still gonna be the same when it comes to the individual tax return. So there, there, with partnerships, there's some different planning things you need to look at, but it doesn't, for the broker that's gonna go out and say, well, do I just buy this individually or do I put it in an LLC? From a tax perspective, it's not gonna matter for them at all. Well, then let's talk about the, the partnerships, right? Because we're seeing that more and more. Hey, you know, I, I'm the one who can find the property. So-and-so's got the money. Let's put this together. Let's make a good partnership. We're real excited. Definitely need an attorney to draw up that operating agreement. Let no me tell question. you up front. No question. But from the tax perspective on it, how then does it change, right? Because is it, it's a pass-through concept, but, but what happens there? It's a pass-through concept, and the income and, and loss perspective flows through to each individual owner based upon how much they own in the partnership and the way the agreement's set up. So depending upon your operating agreement in the LLC will depend upon how the income and losses flow to the different individuals. But that net result still flows through to your personal tax return. So is if you let's say it's just 50 50 to keep things simple. So sure. so you can still on your end it's not super complicated then to put no make the proper notations or forms all the different many government forms that there are out there to say hey this much came to this person this much came to that person. You're exactly right. 
And it's but it's having a competent accountant that understands that concept, Ed. That's the important part here. So so before we we break but and get to the next step, I, I, what is it that makes you different from real estate? From real estate, what what is it that makes you different that makes you able to help people? The concept of our firm deals first with planning, because if you plan and do that before you, everything happens and the year's over, you're able to deliver value for the client. And you're able to put things in perspective to help rescue wasted tax dollars. If you don't do planning, then you're doing the work after the fact. And your bag of tricks gets diminished a lot at 1231, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to do the planning beforehand. So you want to plan for this year and into the future based upon the information you have today. There's an old saying, Ed. You fail to plan, you plan to fail. I would agree. There it is. Ed Lloyd from Ed Lloyd and Associates, ELCPA.com, ELCPA.com, ELCPA.com. Justin Kazepis, today's Real Talk coming right back. Hey, I'm Justin Kazepis, host of today's Real Talk. As I've mentioned, I'm also a real estate attorney. My firm, Kazepis Law PLLC, focuses on residential real estate closings. Taking my years of experience as a real estate broker, I have chosen to make quality of service the top priority for my law firm. Kazepis Law currently serves seven counties in North Carolina, Mecklenburg, Iredale, Cabarrus, Gaston, Lincoln, Catawba, and Union County. Find out more about my law firm, including scheduling your closing at residential reclosings.com that's residential reclosings.com and now let's get back to more of today's real talk today's real talk.com today's real talk.com today's real talk.com i'm justin kazepis now i'm going to tell you guys something this is free by the way i'm going to tell you something that my dad taught me there's two people in life you never short ed your attorney and your accountant those are the two you never do. And I've got a wonderful accountant sitting here at the table with me, Mr. Ed Lloyd of Ed Lloyd and Associates. Ed, we've talked about the history and the changes of the tax code over the years. Biggest changes you've seen in 30 years. That is huge. So you got to be on your P's and Q's. Make sure you hire the person that understands what those changes are and how it's going to affect your tax liability. Ed Lloyd and Associates is the only one I would recommend on that. And then we've also talked about real estate. I mean, that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, Ed. That's what a lot of people are starting to do. A lot of people are interested in real estate. You know, when the market gets hot, right? That's when everybody wants to get involved and get their piece of the pie. But let's talk about the small business owner, the boutique business owner, I've been told is what I should call it as. The boutique business owner, Ed. What should they be thinking about when it comes to tax structure, tax liability? I, I mean, there's just so much to wrap your head around. I mean, so many details we could delve into, but we don't want to confuse the people. Like you said, you were, you were very kind to do that, where I'll just confuse them all day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what are the top things that people should be thinking about? Sure. From a holistic view, the first thing we talked about that towards the beginning is the business structure. Am I in the right business structure? Let's look at that and see if we need to make changes. Do we need to add an entity type? Are we fine? We'll run the numbers and make sure that that works. Because with everybody, it depends. But you just want to make sure it's the right one. With the Tax Cut and Job Act, structure is really, really important. You want to make sure you've got that in play. That's, mm -hmm. that's number one thing that you want to be able to do. The second piece is the introduction of a new deduction. Um, before we had something under section 199, which was for certain industries, and they scrapped that. So they decided, well, we'll just not make it 199A instead. Oh, why not? <laughs> why not? So somebody in Congress had this wonderful idea that, hey, C corporations are getting their rates reduced, so we need to give something to everybody else as well. So with that, they came up with a new 20% deduction under what's it, one section under section 199A, okay. which is great, yeah. right? Now, a deduction and a credit are two different things. Right. A deduction reduces your taxable income, credits a dollar. So every dollar is, is real tax, deduction pulls it down. Now, because the tax code cannot be simple, um, they didn't feel that everybody should be entitled to this no, new wonderful 199A deduction if you make above certain thresholds. So if you are a, a doctor in the health industry, mm -hmm. if you're an attorney, oh great! if you're an accountant, yeah. <laughs> if you're an actuary, if you're in performing arts, um, consulting, if you're an athlete, financial services, brokerage, and any trade or business where it relies upon you. And this really they defined is more 
trademark type of things and things where you if you're it's under you individually and you are the brand right then you're excluded from this um, based upon your income level so I just want to preface that when I talk about this new 199a deduction so it really doesn't apply to everybody there are specific <laughs> categories depending on your industry yes that you don't get the benefit of this deduction as a whole or it's just the cap it's a cap so if you're single Mm -hmm. and you make between 157500 mm -hmm. to 207500 mm -hmm. that deduction is phased out. Okay. If you're married and filing joint, it's 315000 to 415000 It's phased out if you're in those industries. Okay. That makes sense. So, But what, what it, it does is it allows you a 20% deduction on your income. And there's ways that you calculate that. And we, there's no need to get on the details on that. But I was going to say, it, give me all the formulas, Ed, yeah, right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can, but it, 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 have, it, it all depends, right? Yeah. So, but, and that's why it's important from an accounting perspective, we talked earlier, to make sure that you have things accounted for correctly, especially when you have multiple entities, because there's different ways that you account for this multiple entities. You can combine them, but you have to make sure that they're structured right to maximize it. They look at wages. They look at depreciable property and they look at net income, and there are factors that you can look at getting percentages of each based upon how it's all structured. So uh, so, so let me throw out some hot topics to you because I get these questions. And, and you hear it's like, so, so I, I go to real estate, a real estate school, and I, and, I, and I talk to them about the legal side, and, and you hear things, and people ask the questions to the instructors about taxes and what they can write off. So gifts for client, Ed. If I wanted to buy, not that I would as a law firm, I can't give anybody anything of value for referring a client to me, blah, blah, blah. But let's say a real estate broker wants to buy a gift for their client. Can you write that off? The IRS is so generous on gifts. It really floors me. Yes, $25. Oh. Is <laughs> you had me. I was in. I was like, yes, they can. And they didn't even have never indexed it. So really? it's at 25 bucks. So there's it's your threshold right there. Dollars. Yeah. That, that's a pretty good gift card, like a single person out to eat kind of situation. Yeah, buy, maybe. buy them a Starbucks, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, one, one Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about what about the certain things like, like dues and, and fees and licensing? Those those kind of things when we're talking about businesses. Is that stuff still write-offs and normal business expense? or Dues are, um, depending upon what the dues are, that hasn't really changed so much. Um, if it's dues to um, your health club or something mm -hmm. like that, that's not going to be deductible. Mm -hmm. If it's dues to your country club, mm -hmm. that's not going to be deductible. Darn it. Not that I am not part of a country club. <laughs> I was so, going to ask you, though, what if I wanted to buy, like, season tickets for the Panthers, which are doing pretty darn well uh, this year so far? You know, they determined that business is can no longer be fun. Really? Yeah, because um, entertainment is no longer deductible. Gosh. So you can you are not allowed to have fun anymore in business um, and make it deductible. So I'm gonna tell my staff that soon. <laughs> so we can still have fun in business. We just can't write it off. So the entertainment function um, is not deductible any longer. The meals pieces uh, still is um, with different categories now. They've changed that, but deductions for entertainment is gone. So and that's a, that's a big question too because I get all the time. Well, you know, let's go to lunch. Let's go do this. You know, the people always ask they want to do a lunch meeting or they want to go out, right? And you're a business owner, you're a boutique business owner and you're going out and you're having lunches with people. I guess at what point does food become deductible? So let's talk about categories. Oh yeah. Because we, that's another thing from an accounting perspective, right? Got to have categories. Um, there's 50% deductible. Okay. So we get half with the employee meals for the convenience of the employer. Employee meals required for meetings. And when you're traveling overnight, okay, those are all deductible 50%. Uh, 50%. 100% year-end parties for employees and spouses, golf outings for employees and spouses. You I can know, take them golfing at least? Sure. Okay. Now the employees. Now I didn't, oh. say, I didn't say clients. Oh, so, okay. Okay, okay. <laughs> Meals for marketing events that are open to the general public. So if you're doing, if you're a real estate agent, mm -hmm. you're having something f to the market, if you are in, in um, investing and you have it to the it's open to the public like an open house open house yeah those are all deductible if you're having a big event and it's open to the general public those are deductible team building recreational event for all employees that's deductible like the white water center let's say you wanted to go in charlotte the beautiful white water center take them there and take them there okay yeah it's a beautiful location Th that's Every, right. everybody should take their place. that's right support the support do the you city. guys do that do you do you Take them to the White Water Center. I can see you out there. I can see you out there on the, the White Water. Rafting. We've we've got it on the calendar. It hasn't come up yet. Okay, but it is definitely on the calendar. Okay, so <laughs> waiting for you just to hear cooler and then, <laughs> then jump on out there. Um, now some changes yeah. is they've they've whacked the customer part out. 
okay. the way the code is now, right? So entertainment with clients and prospects. Mm -hmm. Not not a deductible. No. No. You're in parties for customers. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. The golf events you wanted to have. Yeah. No. So mm -hmm. that's that's the way that everything stands now. Um, there was some hope with the tax ref with um, that they would make some changes to that, and they still may. You, you never know with tax law, right? Tomorrow could change. Right. So what we're advising is, hey, you need to have three categories. Mm -hmm. Have one for your 50%. Mm -hmm. Have one for your 100%. Mm -hmm. Have one for your 0%. Hopeful, maybe we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if not, then it makes it real easy to be able to adjust it at the end of the year. Now, now, how does that work? Let's say because if let's say you're you're partnering with somebody on an event, let's say that that will be open to the general public, but you got planning meetings, right? And at planning meetings, to get people to come to those meetings, you got to have them eaten. Ed, you know, when you get food on the table for people, they're bound to be at those meetings more. Is that a write-off or no? Does that fall into that customer category still? Do you think? So I think if you're if you and I are going to plan for a meeting, right? That's a that's a business event. Mm -hmm. So um, I would put that under, but you're not an employee, right? right? But you're also, not a, you're also not a customer of mine. It's a, it's a joint venture. So I would run that as deductible. There we go. See, I like that. See, yeah. we put you on the spot. You yeah. work through the formula. You got to have an account that can work through the situations. Ed, you guys provide a wonderful solution, people. You guys have a wonderful um, guide and program, and, and you want to sit down with people and truly help them succeed, which is what I appreciate about you most. You actually care that I'm going to make more money in a year. So as a boutique business owner, I truly appreciate that about you. What should people do if they want to reach you? Um, we're going to have the link up for them, but what is the best way for somebody to contact you? Well, the best way they can give us a call, Okay, 704 544 Seven six zero zero. Okay. They can go to our website, elcpa.com. Those are the two easiest ways to get a hold of us. Okay. So you have a contact form, obviously, on there. We're going to put the link to this guide that you have on here. You have a guide to the new Tax Cut and Jobs Act to try to help people and get them on the right direction as it relates. So we are going to put that link up, todaysrealtalk.com. If you're on Facebook or any of the social media platforms, be sure to click that link. We're going to get you directly to Ed and his team so they can get you an appointment scheduled to help maximize your keep should i say keep return i don't want to say return because you know when you like we talked about when you pay taxes and you pay too much you're really giving a loan to the federal government so what's the best way i should say this ed you want to maximize your tax reduction there we go we're going to maximize your tax reduction we're going to stop you from overpaying the government every year ed thank you so much for joining us i appreciate it thank you justin I absolutely it. absolutely justin kazepis with today's real talk.com today's real talk.com i mentioned the social media facebook that is the main platform where we are um, um, talking and, and really telling people about this program. If you know somebody who has an interest in real estate, um, be sure to check out our previous episodes as well. Share the love a little bit, guys. We welcome your comments. We want to um, create and, and help promote discussion about these topics. We welcome your comments. Um, coming at you next time. Uh, I don't know when that's going to be. You don't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. I'm Justin Gazepis. Have a nice day.